Hi, I'm Brandon Grayson. I'm a high school math teacher. We are going to look at the sine function and uh, we're going to adjust it with some transformations using some common parameters. Uh, so the first thing is that there's the normal sine curve, sine of x starting at 0, 0, goes up to 90 and uh, with a y value of 1. And so you'll notice I'm using degrees. Uh, some of you may be using radians. Um, on, in Desmos here, I, you can switch between ra radians and degrees right there. So there's degrees. Uh, so there's the maximum at 90 degrees of 1, back to a, a 0 of uh, at 180 degrees, minus 1 when x equals 270, and then we're back to the beginning of the cycle um, at 360 degrees, and we're, this is the midline here of the equation, the x-axis. We have a maximum of 1, a minimum of minus 1, and so the amplitude is 1, and the period is 360 degrees. That's when the when the period this periodic function starts over. So uh, let's say we're modeling like the uh, the rotation of a bicycle tire, for example. Um, we have a point on the tire which is touching the ground, and as we rotate the the uh, bicycle moves. Uh, sorry, the point on the tire moves up to some height, and then back down. And you can see we have a problem here because if we're thinking of the x-axis as the ground we don't really want to have this portion of the tire go below the ground. And so we're going to include a shift uh, by some constant amount, which we'll call C for right now. In Desmos, we add a slider like that. And here, look, I've, I've shifted everything up by 1, which essentially shifts the midline from being the x-axis to being this axis, uh, y equals 1. And now my function goes up to 2. and uh, then down to zero here as the minimum. So for example, if this was in uh, inches, uh, sorry, not inches, in feet, uh, then we'd have a, a tire with a diameter of two feet. We'd go up to two feet and down to zero, and that would correctly model the, um, the motion of a bicycle tire. So that's pretty good, um, but th this we still have this sort of total uh, distance here, this amplitude of one going from uh, 2 at the top down to 0, that's still a, a total distance of only 2. So we might want to change the amplitude of a function. So I'm going to add a parameter a. I'm multiplying it at the start here. When a is 1, that's just our regular sine function uh, plus our vertical translation that we um, already put in place here. But if I increase the value of a, it's going to change the amplitude of the function. So if I increase it like to 2 point, let's say, well, I'll just say 2 then you can see my function goes up to a maximum here of 3 and down to a minimum of minus 1 and that's a total distance of 4 now. So I've doubled the amplitude. We have an amplitude of 2. The midline is still here at y equals 1 because of my parameter c here which gives me the vertical translation. So I've shifted it up by 1 and then I've doubled the amplitude. Or you might think I've doubled the amplitude and then shifted it up by 1 is maybe a better way to think about it because with order of operations the multiplication here happens first. Well there's one more thing that you might want to do sometimes. Maybe we want to, I'm going to actually increase this a little bit too. There we go. We'll get rid of these points. Uh, we might want to do a horizontal translation. So let's do that. And I'm going to subtract a parameter d. Subtracting because uh, it's more intuitive. If I increase d, watch what happens. As I increase d, my graph moves to the right. Well, it's moving very slightly, though. Because I'm in degrees here, uh, Desmos by default gives you a minus 10 to plus 10 slider. So let's uh, put a much bigger top end on that slider of 400. And now as I slide it, you'll see. There we go. Okay, well, I'm going to change these parameters back to their original values here so we can see this really clearly. So we'll have d start at 0. There we go. Okay, so there's our basic sine function. We've got 1 for a, 0 for c, and 0 for d. And as I adjust d, I'm going to get a horizontal translation. There's 90. I've moved it by 90 degrees. And you can see now the starting place. Uh, is here, which is sort of the tail end of what would have been our original first cycle, or before the first cycle, and everything's been moved over by 90 degrees. If I keep going, there's 180 degrees, and you can see we're halfway through a cycle already. That would be the end of a normal sine cycle, and then one more part of the wave. And if we go all the way to 360, 
we've gone through one full cycle, one full period, and so everything looks normal again. We'll bring that back to d equals zero. Uh, so now the way this is all written out here, um, the order that this happens in, you sort of you've resolved d here first to figure out where you are horizontally on the graph. Then you multiply by the amplitude, and then you shift everything vertically. So if we shift things over by, say, 90 degrees, and then have a change in amplitude, and then shift things down, that's the order that things are happening in um, as, you, as you sort of calculate different points along the curve. So those are three different ways you can modify or transform a curve. They're analogous to the kinds of things we would have done with a quadratics as well. Uh, with a quadratic, we would have had sort of a, a vertex form that looked a lot like this with a, a compression or stretch factor at the beginning, a horizontal translation, and a vertical translation. Um, a horizontal translation, you might see another name for that called a phase shift, P-H-A-S-E. Um, and that just means that uh, your phase has to do with any periodic function. We, we call it phase, the, uh, the horizontal shape of it, the cycles, the number of cycles going on. Um, there is There are two ways to look at that though, and so I'm not going to deal with it in this video because it's a little bit complicated uh, and there's sort of a, a disagreement between different fields of thought on that. So um, that's those are the three parameters that we're going to deal with for now. The vertical, uh, the amplitude change with a compression or a stretch factor right here, the horizontal uh, or phase shift, and then the vertical shift or vertical translation. I hope that helps. Thanks a lot.